Okay, um, now we're going to do some problems from the book. Now this is the book that I'm using. It's the sixth edition of Excursions in Modern Math. So it might be a little different than yours. So that's why I'll, I'll tell you the problem that I'm going to solve so you won't have to actually use the book. The first one I'm going to do on linear growth is problem six. And in this problem, we are given that we have a population that grows according to linear growth. And that the population for step five is 37. And the population for step seven is 47. And then the first question is A. What is the common difference? D. Okay. Now, if you want to try it yourself, you can hit pause after I state each problem. Now, the way we do this is we see that P7 and P5, that's that's two. It's spaced ahead by two generations. And the difference was the total difference is ten. So in each generation, the difference has to be five. P7 minus P5 divided by two. Or 47 minus 37 divided by 2 is 10 over 2, and that's 5. <clears throat> In other words, P6 must have been 42 so, because it was just growing linearly. So you just take the difference, and then we get D equals 5. Okay, great. Now, let's go on to B. Question B. What was the initial population? P0. Well, here we just have to work backwards. Uh, if P5 is 37, P0, well, I can say this. It's going to be P5 minus 5 times D. In other words, you have to go back. If you went back just 1 to P4, you can only subtract 5. But here you're going to do 5 times, so that's going to be 25. It's going to be 37 minus 5 times 5. 37 minus 25. And that's going to be 2, 1. It's going to be 12. And then once you do that, of course, you can always check your work. That's always a good idea. We can check our work here by just saying if P0 were 12, but we know that the formula for the n is going to be P0 plus n times d. So P5 is equal to P0 plus 5 times d, or P0 plus 25. Yes, P0 plus 25. And um, P0 is 12. If P0 were 12, 12 plus 25 is 37, which of course it is 37, so this means that I must have got it right. Okay. C. Find an explicit description of the population sequence. Actually, we just did that. Pn is equal to P0 plus n times d. That's the general formula, but now we happen to know that P0 is 12. So, and we now happen to know that the d is 5. So it's n times 5. So the n, the population on the nth step or the nth generation, is going to be 12 plus the, uh, the number of the generation times 5. That's this linear growth in problem number 6. Okay, now we're going to move on to problem number 7. Okay, problem number 7 says. An arithmetic sequence has a1 equal to 11 and a2 equals negative 4. And then the first step is going to be find a3. Okay. So we got the first two and we want to find the third. So I would say the first thing that we want to do is find d, the difference. So to get the difference, we're going to take a2 minus a1. We're going to divide it by 2 minus 1. It's the difference in the indices. 2 minus 1, that's, that's just 1. 1. And when you divide something by 1, that's just the same. It's just the difference here is just going to be 11 
minus neg no I'm sorry a2 is going to be negative 4 minus 11 and that's equal to negative 15 so in this case this is a little bit of a trick question because d is negative and this is linear growth but it's decreasing it's not increasing it's not actually growth it's what you'd call shrinkage or whatever okay so d is equal to negative 15 so a3 for example we could just say that's equal to a2 plus d that's one way to get it now a2 is negative 4 d is negative 15 so if you have negative 4 and you take away another 15, you get all the way down to negative 19. So that's A3. A3 is going to be negative 19. Okay? That's step A. Now let's go to part B. Part B, number 7, said find A0. Huh, well, A0, we are going to A1. All we can do is uh, we could say that A0 going to be a1 minus whatever that d is. Oh, we did. We already solved for d, but we didn't write it down. d was equal to minus 15. It was, it was a2 minus a1. Okay, so a0 is going to be a1 minus d, so a1 we know is 11 minus. Now here's another thing that's a trick with the negative number. You have to subtract, but you're subtracting a negative 15, so I like to do that with parentheses, so I get the two negatives. That way I can just turn it into the positive. Plus 15, and that's going to be 26. So A0 is going to be 26. Okay? That's question B. Now, part C, it's a C. Part number 7, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it says, how many terms in the sequence are bigger than 30? Thirty. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. The way this sequence actually goes is, the first one, A0, was 26. Then A1 was 11. A2 was negative 4. A3 was negative 19, dot, 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 sequence. Um, it doesn't actually tell us actually what the total length of this particular sequence was. But we can be rest assured that there aren't any terms bigger than 30 because the first one is only 26 and they just get smaller and smaller. So the answer to this is zero. There aren't any terms bigger than 30. Okay? That's number seven. Now let's go to problem number 12. Problem number 12 is like this. So, A, it says find, um, no, it says 21 plus 7. Plus 7 plus dot 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 dot. Plus 7. And then they tell you that there are 57 terms. Well, this is a little bit interesting now. This is not an example of an arithmetic sequence uh, because the, the difference between each of these terms is not the same. This is just, I don't know, it's just a math problem. It's a little bit of a trick problem because we're studying linear growth, but this is just a 57 numbers. Now, the way I would do this is I can see here that there are 57 I'm sorry, 56 of these numbers are just 7. So I would say the answer is 21 plus 56 times 7. And 56 times 7, I guess I would just do that using the multiplication. Uh, 2, carry the 4, 35, 39, 392. So this is equal to, first what I like to do is call this the, the answer, let's say. I always like to write down complete equations because that's like if you were writing a story you'd write with complete sentences. So I'm going to say answer equals 21 plus 392. And 392 plus 21 that's not a hard a 21. That's 3, 1, 1, 413 is what I get. 
Okay, so A, the answer is 413. Now, part B. So I got the answer to A. Oh, it's 413. 57 terms. Okay, now we're going to go to part B. Actually, we don't even need to part A anymore. But to get part B, we don't need part A. Part B is totally different. Part B says, find this one. 21 plus 28 plus 35 plus dot, dot, dot. And then it says 57 terms. Okay, so this is kind of like a little, a little bit like the other one because there are a total of 57 terms. But in this one, we see that the difference between the first term and the second term is 7. And the difference between the second term and the third term is 7. And then it says dot, dot, dot. Now, you have to assume that these, this sequence is going to increase like a linear uh, growth, an arithmetic sequence, and they're all separated by 7. The problem doesn't actually say that. But since that's what we're studying, that's what it, that's what, that must be what they have. So this now is going to be just what we thought before. We're going to take the formula for the uh, sum of the arithmetic sequence. We're going to take the first one, add the last one, multiply by the number of terms, and we're going to divide by 2. But the last one's not written down explicitly. So in order to get that, we have to do this. The last one is going to be 21 plus 57 times 7. Because 7 is the difference. D equals 7. So the last term, I'll just call it last, equals now 57 times 7. 7 times 7 is 49. 35 to 399. Okay? Plus the 21. Three ninety nine plus twenty one zero one twelve one. That's four hundred and twenty. So I'm just going to fill in here. We just discovered that the last one happens to be four hundred and twenty, and there are fifty seven terms. So now the sum. I'm just going to call that sum equals first one plus the last one times the number of them, which is 57, and then divide it by 2. Okay, now the first one, the last one, that's going to come out to uh, 441 times 57, and divide it by 2. And here's where I would want to pull out a calculator, because None of these is an even number. I can't really divide that by 2. Um, to make it simpler, it's just going to come out to be a certain number. I could do it with the... I could multiply it out. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'll do, let you do that. Um, sometimes, sometimes problems come out nice and even, but they don't always. Uh, but when they don't come out even, usually what I do is I go back and check my math just to make sure. I didn't make a mistake. 49, yeah. 420, that looks right. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let's see if there was two terms. Oh, yeah. I did make a mistake. Sorry about this. I double-checked it. This really up here is 57 terms. This should only be 56. Because if there were two terms, for example, I, I, I should only get 28. That's why I, I got such a complicated answer. The real answer probably comes out a lot easier than that. Anyway, that gives you an example of how it's easy to make a mistake. Uh, 57 times, 56 times 7, 2, 4, 392. So let's see if that comes out any better. 392 plus 21. So the last term, according to this, 21, 3, 11, 1, 413. Okay, so now I'm saying that the actual last term is only 413. I put on an extra term accidentally when I did that. Now that means that the sum 
equal to 21 plus 413 